So today's workshop is all about package free shopping. Um, and these are my socials where you can contact me. I don't really have social media anymore. I'm sure most of you have heard this before anyway. <laughs> but this is my email address. You can always reach me there. My LinkedIn is Evangeline Rowe. And my YouTube channel is called Eve the Vegan. And I will be uploading a video, which should have gone live a few minutes ago, <laughs> to go alongside this, um, this workshop over on my YouTube channel. That's just a bit more personal, just me, rather than like more broad shopping. <laughs> so firstly, I wanted to talk about what I call package full shopping or just lots of packaging and shopping. Um, this is from, this source is really, really interesting. If you're interested to find it, if you just type into Google, plastic waste, House of Commons library, you'll be able to find this resource where I got all these numbers from. So in 2017, 46% of plastic waste was recovered or recycled in the UK. This is about 20% above what the aim is. So every year the UK aims to recycle about 26% the plastic waste we like to think it's much higher it's not as high as we think and only nine percent of the world's plastic waste is recycled that means that only nine percent of the plastic ever produced has ever been recycled and in 2014 a wwf report found that the uk produced 4.9 million tons of plastic waste across all sectors so industry as well and in 2019 the uk exported 0.5 million tons of plastic waste which is the lowest in a decade. I think the highest was in 2011 and we exported 0.9 million tons of plastic. We were exporting the large majority of our plastic waste to China. And then a couple of years ago, China said, no, we're not having it. We're not doing this anymore. <laughs> so that's led to the drastic drop of the amount of waste that we're exporting. We tend to export plastic waste. It depends on your local council. Every council is different but we tend to export waste because it's cheaper. Because in the UK we have, well, better environmental legislation than a lot of other nations. It costs a lot more to get rid of waste than it does in some other countries. And so what we'll do is we'll just outsource, we'll just ship all of our rubbish somewhere else and they'll deal with it there. But it often means that it ends up in local environments there. It's not dealt with properly and it just ends up just rotting basically in the open air and destroying people's lives and livelihoods. 6% uh, of global oil, oil production is devoted to the production of plastics. I think it's really important to remember that fossil, the fossil fuel industry is the plastic industry. They're pretty much the same thing. Oil is plastic, plastic is made from oil. Um, the environmental cost of plastic in consumer goods is 3.8 times less than the alternative materials that would be needed to replace plastic. So I think this is a really important statistic because we often think of replacing plastic with things like paper and cardboard and biodegradable plastic alternatives. But in reality, this can be even more harmful. It takes a lot more resources to make a paper bag that does like a plastic bag, has a larger carbon footprint, when really we need to be going down the reusable routes rather than changing to biodegradable disposables because often even the biodegradable disposals and I pick a lot of biodegradable coffee cups off Bournemouth Beach <laughs> and not got rid of in the proper way especially when things are biodegradable because often councils don't have access to industrial composts um, and so things just don't get composted but then don't stress you cannot be perfectly zero waste in a world where the standard is wasteful you cannot be perfect and we need to try and take some of that stress off of our cells. We can only do so much as individuals. A lot of it is companies and industries fault as well. We can't take all the blame. Okay, so first I want to talk about containers because usually when you don't use packaging, you have to use your own packaging. So I always say use what you already have, upcycle jars, upcycle hankies, upcycle strips of material, old t-shirts, literally anything. Um, just use what you already have before buying new. It can get really expensive and it has a massive ecological footprint buying all of these fancy produce bags, wax wraps, whatever they sell nowadays. Um, it can get really expensive. And then make your own. So I personally made loads of produce bags from some scrap material a couple of years ago and I've still got them all. Making produce bags is really easy. I will eventually do a YouTube video on that when my sewing machine is fixed. <laughs> um, still haven't done it. <laughs> Um, 
I also make my own tea bags. They're really easy to make from sort of like a cheesecloth material. And I just use um, some little strings from clothes. You know, the strings they put on women's clothes where you can hang them on hangers so they hang nicer. Yeah, those are my drawstrings for my tea bags. <laughs> and just upcycle things as well, like with the clothing hanger thing and with using scrap materials and jars. It's really easy to get stickers off of jars. I see a lot of videos about this. Um, just warm, soapy water works fine for me. Um, I don't worry about the little bits, bits of glue stuck to it. Just jars, they're just fine as they are. <laughs> and then ethics before aesthetics. I feel like the zero waste, uh, low impact movement is all about this really beautiful matching jar pantry and everything looks really pretty ethics before aesthetics that it's it's not a pinterest perfect world um i do have some really lovely jars i got from my grandma she wasn't using anymore some really nice like um nice mason jars but most of mine are upcycled black olive jars from sainsbury's i really like the black olive jars they're the best jars if anyone's looking for some jars and some black olives um but yeah ethics before aesthetics so a cotton tote bag must be used 131 times before its ecological impact is the same as a single use plastic bag. It really frustrates me when people forget their bags and then think that it's better to buy more reusable bags instead of buying a plastic bag. It's better to buy a plastic bag than reuse that plastic bag to keep stuff in your freezer or just like use it as a bin liner than it is to just keep buying reusable bags. You don't need that many reusable bags. And a 2014 US study found that about 40% of shoppers forgot to bring their reusable bags. This again, if you're intentionally leaving the house to go and buy food, just pick up a bag and always take an extra one, always take one more than you think you need, because you will need it, I guarantee you. <laughs> In fact, I went shopping the other day just for a few tins of food and I came back with lots of tins of food and I didn't have any bags and there was quite embarrassing having to carry everything loose to my car and then to my house. <laughs> but yeah, just always just put bags everywhere in your coat pockets, in your handbag, in your car, on your bike, everywhere, just put them everywhere. So package free shops, this is probably the most, I don't know, I wouldn't say popular, I would just say the most well-known way. And I understand that everyone doesn't have access to this. I only recently have access to this and I'm so grateful for that. So in package free shops, you weigh and you tear your containers so that you don't pay for the price of the weight of your container. <laughs> um, but the best thing I think about package free shops is that you only buy what you need. You're not limited to the weight or size of product that's packaged. You literally buy what you need. So if you don't need much of something just to try a recipe, you can just try it. You don't need to buy 200 grams of it. You can buy 50 grams of it. And of course, package free shops tend to be independent. I don't know of many chains apart from bigger supermarkets that are dipping their toes into the um, into this kind of area. Um, so they're usually small businesses. So there's obviously a positive, especially now supporting small businesses and buying locally. So my package free shop, it has um, a little logo on it when something is local, so you know it's local. Um, and it has, it tells you if something's organic. Package free shops do tend to also be organic and this is why they are more expensive. And this is why a lot of people are put off because they are more expensive. But I just really want to emphasize that the prices in package free shops tend to reflect the, ecolog the, the ecological footprint of the product. So for example, rice in a supermarket is really, it's dirt cheap, it's so cheap. But in my local package free shop, rice is about four pound a kilo. And it's four pound a kilo because rice paddies require so much water and rice has such an incredibly high carbon footprint and water footprint, it's almost equal to cotton. So it's really not good for the environment. So we need to be paying for that in our products and choosing alternative grains perhaps. So now we have a lot more couscous rather than a lot more rice because rice is simply just very expensive. A lot of packaged free shops are also taking online orders now. Um, so you can literally go on their website, um, order, they can deliver to you or pick up depending on how far away you live. So if you are self-isolating, then there's always that option as well. So fruit and veg. Um, I, I use a delivery service for mine, but obviously eating plant-based, you eat a lot more fruit and veg. I talked about plant-based eating in my last recording. 
um, in my last workshop. Um, I definitely recommend that if you are buying fruit and veg from anywhere that you buy seasonally and locally, it also works out cheaper. When you buy things seasonally, it tends to be the cheaper option. Um, and if you buy from local markets or you know, local green grocers, um, then you are supporting, again, small businesses, which is much better. I absolutely used to love going to my local market, but sadly, there isn't really one that's close to me. And because of the virus, we can't go to them. Um, local markets also, some of them tend to be organic. If you just keep an eye out, you can find nice organic ones. If not, River Food is completely organic. Um, and then there, of course, there are delivery services as well. So Oddbox, I've talked about Oddbox in my workshops before. I'm desperate for them to come to Bournemouth. They're only in Brighton and London right now, but they only distribute um, surplus and what I call ugly veg, <laughs> veg that the supermarkets don't want because they're not quite shiny enough, big enough. They've got a birthmark. I call them birthmarks <laughs> um, or something like that. They just don't want them. And so they give them to other people instead of them being thrown away. Um, they get sold in odd box. And I think they're quite a good price as well. A friend of mine always records um, like a little video for me when she gets her odd box delivery and then takes pictures of her fridge when she's put it all away and sends it to me. And I really appreciate that. So if you ever want to send me pictures of your um, fruit and veg boxes, feel free. Able & Co is another one, but that is quite a big company. And then my personal favorite, Bournemouth & Paul Mobile Market, which is in Bournemouth & Paul. Um, and they're the service I use and they're really great. They're run, they're run by a couple who have a little baby. So it's great seeing their company grow with their family and it's just really lovely supporting small businesses. Supermarkets also do have loose produce sections. Um, I think Sainsbury's is the best for loose and they also do some organic fruits and veggies as well, although their organic stuff tends to be wrapped in plastic. Kind of depends what your priority is, whether it's package free or organic. Organic is better for farming practices. Um, a lot of the time it doesn't make that much difference in terms of the pesticides that you'll find on your food, especially with things like oats. It's a bit different with things like carrots. Definitely try and buy organic carrots. But when it comes to oats, you, you can still find chemicals in organic oats. But the farming practice, the organic farming practice, is much better for the environment, it's much more sustainable. So that's why I choose organic as much as I can, although I do understand it is more expensive sometimes. Um, then there's buying online. I've done this quite a lot. One of my YouTube videos is me buying like 61 kilos of food online because <laughs> um, I didn't have access to a package free shop then. Um, we buy our oats online. We buy 25 kilo bags of organic oats about every four months for two adults. I know that's an excessive amount. Of, uh, that's an excessive amount of oats, but we make a lot, a lot of oat milk. So I use Buy Whole Foods online. They're really great. Or there's Wilton Whole Foods as well. Um, they do come in plastic. Some of them, like you'll get a two kilo bag. But then again, the ratio of product packaging goes down the bigger the bag. So it's kind of better. Um, and it's definitely better for things like beans if you want to buy dried beans and cook your own beans or soak your own beans instead of buying tinned beans. Um, that's what I prefer to do. And it's definitely better because a lot of tins are lined with BPA. And unless you know, it doesn't say on the tin that it's lined with BPA. You need to kind of open the tin, feel around the tin, or sometimes you can see it will be like a white coating. But yeah, you can also buy refills online. Of things like spices, you can buy them little spice sachets um, and you can, again, order online from local package free shops. And if anyone's using Amazon, then you can change your settings and request package uh, and request plastic free packaging when they send you your Amazon stuff instead of those air bags they use. And you can return plastic bags. So if you're getting things like Ocado shops or just supermarket shops and they give it to you in um, plastic bags, if you save them up, you can get them back. I know with Ocado, you get, I think it's 5p when you give back your bag. So they charge you 5p and then you give it back, they give you your 5p back and they reuse the bags or they melt them down and shape them into new bags, whatever they do. But either way, it's always good to return the plastic bags. And especially if there's an incentive too by getting that 5p, if you've got 10 bags, 50p, you know, you could buy a suite with that. So it's always good to return your plastic bags. And only buying what you need, again, online, you know, you're not tempted by walking around a shop as much, I find. Never walk around a shop when you're hungry.
And then supermarkets, supermarkets make me so anxious. I don't know if anyone else gets anxious. Nothing's ever where it's supposed to be. The tinned, uh, the coconut milk is never in the tin aisle and I don't really know why. And it's very stressful for me. Anyway. So a lot of supermarkets have been trialing some bulk food sections. I know a Waitrose did and a Morrison's did, and that's really, really exciting. I'm really hoping to see more of that because I think it will make it a lot more accessible for a lot of people who don't live places that have a package free shop or may not be able to afford to shop small. Um, and then bulk buy, again, the bigger the bag, the smaller the ratio of product packaging. So often they do this with pasta. I used to do this when I didn't have a package free shop, used to buy really big bags of pasta. It's always good. And then just choosing different materials. So choosing tins and jars over plastic or Terra Pack. I feel like Terra Pack was introduced to be something that was more eco-friendly, but because so many local councils don't have access to Terra Pack recycling and it's so expensive to implement it and to have like a Terra Pack collection in your local area, a lot of times the Terra Pack doesn't get recycled. So just bear that in mind. Um, obviously with jars, I would recommend that you try and be a bit careful because glass weighs so much more than plastic or aluminium. And so it uses more carbon. So it uses more greenhouse gases to ship it to this country. So I tend to only buy things in jars that were packed in the UK. And all my jars are the same because I just buy the same thing over and over again. That's how I can make such a nice pantry with all my olive jars. Buy tins, you know, are not lima plastic. I did mention this, but it is quite scary, I find, that some tins, like something that inherently doesn't need to have plastic on it, and then you put plastic in it, you line it with plastic, and so it makes it more difficult to recycle, and it's BPA, and I don't know if anyone knows much about BPA, about BPA, but there's a really great um, Green Dreamer podcast episode all about BPA and how it can affect your hormones, especially if you are a man, it can affect your sperm count. It's not good. Plastic's not good for you. You don't want any of that leaching into your food. And obviously your food and tins are sitting in there for a very long period of time. It's long life food and you just don't know how much has leaked in there. And then a little bit of activism for you. This is often quite unpopular when I tell people about it, but I find it quite fun. Leave your packaging there. So I used to do this quite a lot where you, you buy all your food and then when you're checking out, you empty all your food out of all the packaging and you just leave it at checkout. It is a bit annoying for the members of staff who are working there. I completely understand that because it's not their fault. But the problem is we can't not do anything because we didn't ask for our food to be packaged this way. It's just been packaged this way for us for convenience and we've got used to it. And by taking that packaging home, you're then making it your responsibility to, to, to dispose of it. When in reality, I feel like it should be the company's responsibility. So this is a really great way to put it on them and say, I didn't ask for this. This is yours. Do what you will with it. I'm not taking it home. And if you don't want to do this by yourself, I completely understand. My boyfriend used to hate me doing it. He used to have to leave the shop. <laughs> But if you want to get a group of you, there is this, it is, it is a form of activism where you will go and do your weekend shop together. Obviously not now, but at some point in the future. And you will go and you do a weekly shop and then you leave the shop and in the car park, you unpackage all your food and then you put it all in a trolley and you take it in and you ask for the manager and you give it to the manager and you say, I just want you to know that I didn't ask this to be packaged this way. If you could tell your superior that we don't want this that this isn't right and if that keeps getting done then they'll have to do something because they have to pay to have their bins and if they keep filling up their bins they're going to say oh it's costing us money to get rid of all this stuff maybe we should make differences I don't know but let's just hope it makes difference but that's an option if you're if you're into that and then just making it yourself so the best thing to try and save on packaging is to buy less processed foods and I know a lot of people don't have enough time um, but a lot of it really doesn't take that much time. I'm lucky enough to have an instant pot, which I'm completely in love with. And it's, it's like a seven in one pressure cooker, essentially, just like a slow cooker. So I make my stock, my soups and my stews in there and I can just leave it without touching it, without worrying about it, because it's not on the hob or anything. And then also making DIY ready meals. Um, in order to save time with food in general, I would definitely recommend bulk 
making food. So making enough food for twice as much as you need, but only make food that you know you're going to like. So things like chili, I make a lot of chili, but I always make twice as much as I need because I eat it the next day in a burrito. But what you could do is you could dispense it into a container, put half rice, half chili in the container and then freeze it. And then you have a DIY ready meal ready to go that is cheaper than buying a ready meal and saves you time and energy when you can't be bothered or when you just don't have the time. This is my little vegan parmesan recipe. <laughs> um, it's quite boring, but it's, it works well and it's a lot cheaper than vegan cheese and it doesn't come packaged in loads of plastic like most vegan cheeses do. It's just cashews blended in a food processor with a little bit of salt and some nosh, which is nutritional yeast. It's like um, dried yeast flakes. A lot of people, it looks like fish food, but it's also got a B12 in it. It's usually, um, yeah, usually got B12 in it. So that's also good for everyone to eat. Everyone needs more B12. They, microbes don't really like our soils much anymore. And then making your own plant milks. This is an incredible way of saving money and saving on packaging. Oat milk, I've talked about my oat milk before. I make oat milk probably every other day. Um, I love making oat milk. It takes me like five minutes and I don't wanna know how much money it saved me because plant milks do tend to be more expensive. Little tip, if you want cheaper plant milk, buy it from the long life milk section rather than the refrigerator section in the supermarket because they'll charge you about 50p more to have it in the fridge than they will to have it in the long life milk, sec um, the long life milk section, even though it's the same product. And then making things like hummus and falafel, tofu, getting there, and veggie burgers. So hummus and falafel are really easy to make. There is a really great Bosch recipe for both of them. Um, and you can cook or soak all the chickpeas for all of it. I tend to make my hummus and my falafel at the same time because it means I don't need to clean my blender. I can cook all the chickpeas at the same time. Uh, tofu, I'm still trying. I had another failed attempt last week, maybe one day. Uh, veggie burgers are really, really easy to make. You can even use the, the soy pulp from making tofu to make veggie burgers. You can make like beetroot burgers using the soy pulp. It's basically like soy protein isolate almost. So it's a really good source of protein, really good for you. Um, making sauces yourself as well. I make um, cashew cream cheese and it's really, really yummy. Just things, these things, although they seem like they take a long time to make, I tend to set aside a few hours on a Sunday and I make loads of things um, that I can use throughout the week, like little snacks. So I just can run into the kitchen and get things as and when I want them without worrying about doing things. And then potatoes. I was absolutely astonished when I first started doing my own food shopping. I went down the freezer aisle and they had a whole aisle in my local Sainsbury's just dedicated to potatoes. So it was like, frozen jack potatoes, frozen roasties, frozen chips, frozen mash. And I, in my honest opinion, it takes just as long to prepare and take things out of the freezer and do stuff like that. Um, just put chips on the tray than it does to just top, chop up a potato and put them on a tray. And it takes so amount of time to cook as well. But that will save you a ton of money and a ton of packaging if you stop buying frozen potatoes. And start using fresh potatoes. I understand if you have a disability or something, um, you know, and you can't chop things up, you know, that's absolutely fine, each to their own. And that's what those products are there for, those products. Uh, those pre-cut veggies, pre-cut potatoes and stuff help people gain their independence. But for other people, it just is an easy way out. And I think it's, we do sometimes need to hold ourselves a little bit responsible and say, okay, I can spare five minutes out of my TV time this evening to cut up a potato and make chips instead of using frozen chips. Making cookies, cakes, and popcorn. Popcorn is a really, really cheap, just buying popcorn kernels, putting them on the hob, and having popcorn is a really cheap, easy, healthy snack, and takes barely any time. And again, I don't have enough time. I used to do all of these things, and I used to commute four hours a day to my previous university. I used to leave the house at 5.30 in the morning, get home at 8 p.m. at night, I don't have kids or anything, but I still used to have time to make my stocks and my soups and ice juice. It's important to remember that we all have 24 hours in the day and everyone's lives are different. So yeah, make sure that you can make this work for you. But at the same time, I really don't like people saying I don't have enough time uh, because we all have the same amount of hours in the day. We don't 
you know, it's not like someone has 20 and someone has 28. No, it's just we use our time differently. And some of that's our choice and some of that's not our choice. But still, it's just worth remembering and holding ourselves accountable so that we can grow as individuals. OK, so thank you for listening. Um, and now I'll answer any of your questions.